Ask the people who observe sea otters every day and you'll realize that this is actually a pretty special species. Their behaviors, social interactions, and quirky individual characteristics are just some of the things that we love about them. I went to Alcorn Slough to see firsthand how sea otters live their lives. Each day, researchers venture out into Alcorn Slough to check up on the sea otter population. They keep track of tagged individuals, observe how otters are using this unique habitat, and see what otters are feeding on. In the process, researchers have documented some unique behaviors. Ron Eby, a naturalist for the Elkhorn Slough National Estuary Research Reserve, took me out on the water. They're just so fun to watch. I mean, they're their intelligence really comes through when you look at them interacting with each other. I mean, they do one third of their life grooming, and they do one third foraging, and they do one third sleeping. So most of what we're seeing is that. Yeah. They're doing one of those three things. But in addition to that, they're curious. So if something happens to come by, they may pick it up and play with it. As the tide comes in, sometimes it'll bring kelp in, and you'll see them playing, they'll wrap themselves up in it, or they'll put some over top of their body like that. Uh, you'll see them communicating with each other. They'll, and we don't know exactly how they're communicating, but they'll touch noses and they'll sniff each other and do those type of interactions. Mothers and pups are always interacting. They, they're just inseparable. Mm -hmm. So they're always interacting. Other otters, it's like passing interactions. Mm -hmm. One's coming through another one's territory or something, and they'll check each other out and, and then go on. Otters will spend some time interacting, and especially here in the slough, often seem playful. When resting, they'll gather in tight groups called rafts. Most of the time, though, females and pups raft separately from the males. Along about sunset, they'll start congregating here. Some will come and go throughout the day, but the majority of them come in in the evening and you can get well over 100 here. Sometimes up to 150 we've counted here. Sea otters use a number of vocalizations to communicate. It's especially common to hear pups make a high-pitched squeal when mom's not around. But researchers have also identified more subtle sounds between adults, including whistles, squeaks, hisses, growls, coos, and grunts. In addition, otters use physical cues to communicate. When they get up in the morning, one will come up and will just put his head on the other one, do some sniffing. Uh, sometimes you'll see a young juvenile come in and just like our kids, full of all that energy, and he'll actually jump on them. And he'll jump on another otter and jump on another otter. Uh, we see them times where they'll wake up and one otter will go over, pick out another otter over here that apparently they're buddies or something, and then they'll go out together. So they're definitely communicating. The sea otter's most important social bond is between a mother and her pup. For six months to a year, a mother otter will give her pup almost constant attention, feeding, holding, grooming, and keeping the pup warm and safe. In the process, moms also model essential otter behaviors, such as foraging and grooming. Otters are taught everything by their mothers. So a mother that, for instance, is foraging off Big Sur, she's teaching her pup how to eat abalone, how to eat crabs, things that are in that environment. So they learn how to take advantage of the kelp, how to get urchins and stuff. So that otter learns certain things from her. An otter that's born up here is gonna learn a different foraging strategy. Otters do know how to use tools. They often learn that from their mother. So they're individualistic because each mother is teaching its pup the things that it had learned. For a sea otter, hunting for food is a top priority and they spend around 25% of their time foraging. They mostly use short dives to catch prey on the sea floor, and mainly stay in water less than 100 feet deep. Once they get their meal, they'll bring it to the surface to process and consume it. There you often see them using rocks to break open clams and other shellfish. Each otter has its own way of doing things. They're adapting to the food sources in the environment they're in. So ones in the kelp bed may not bother diving at all. They may just pull some of the kelp up over them, reach through, get the little crabs. Some otters just live off of them. Uh, out here we have eelgrass, there's a lot of crabs in that. In order to survive in the cold water, otters need to maintain their luxurious coat. For up to 15% of their day, they meticulously groom their fur. Otters rub in air and cap it off by doing somersaults to trap the air next to their skin, keeping them warm and dry. They have to keep replenishing that air in there, and they have to keep those outer hairs 
guard hairs, as they're called, uh, all clean so that they will lay down and actually provide that waterproofing. But their nose and their paws don't have that. Imagine how cold your hands get when yeah. you get out there and you get cold. So their faces are exposed, their paws are exposed. The funniest thing, I think, is watching how they can roll over. Both paws out of the water and they can do a complete 360 yeah. without ever getting their head or their paws in the water. When male sea otters reach full maturity, they'll often be territorial. Breeding can occur any time of the year, with autumn being the peak season. Oftentimes when females are fertile, they'll swim to a male's territory and stay there for a short time during mating. Sea otters can have multiple breeding partners, but temporary pair bonding does occur. They do look close while they're together. They do nuzzle a lot. He may, sometimes he may bump into her and just continually bump her until she'll mate with him again. But other times she may come up to him. She'll come up, I've seen them with their arm around each other. Oh. And just all these really cute poses that we shouldn't presume yeah. them to be thinking like humans are, but it sure looks like it. It's not all about just eating, sleeping, and grooming. There's that interplay and interactions and checking out the world and playing with it as they can that, that to me shows that real intelligence behind there. There's no reason for it other than their curiosity. You know, their fascination with the world around them. One of the things I love about sea otters is that they're constantly exploring their world and they have this real zest for understanding. It's kind of like me. And it might be one of the things that draws scientists to study them. You know, that exploration is really what science is all about.